Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. So in forestry, we have a lot of different terms we use to describe various systems. And we can break these down broadly into harvest systems and silvicultural systems. Silvicultural systems are more the way the forest is engineered to grow the way we want it to, like um, you know, selection harvesting, uh, shelter wood systems, etc. But then we have harvest systems, and these are the systems that are actually used to harvest the wood. Now, as silviculturists, we may naturally pay more attention to the silvicultural systems, but we shouldn't ignore the harvest systems because they themselves have important implications for the overall health and growth of the forest. And so we can further break down harvest systems into two broad categories. We have more conventional systems, which utilize chainsaws, and then mechanized systems, which use large machinery. Now, conventional systems are inherently more flexible, and so you see a whole array of different categories and subcategories depending on the machinery that it's matched with. And this varies substantially around the country and especially the world. But mechanized logging is a lot more standardized, so you really have two systems that are utilized. You have the cut to length system, and then you have the whole tree system. So what I wanted to do today is introduce you to these two systems and go over some of the advantages and disadvantages using some models. So let's get started. So let's start with the whole tree system and its harvesting machine, the Feller Buncher. Now this is a tracked Feller Buncher. They also make wheeled Feller Bunchers that are more popular in other parts of the country. But this particular model looks like an excavator. So it swivels from left to right and um, it's on two tracks. But the part that really makes a feller buncher a feller buncher is the head. So we have an area here with little grabby arms that can grab onto a tree and then a large circular saw blade uh, that can actually sever a stem. And importantly, it can actually grab onto a tree, cut it, and then pick it up. So let's see how this works on the ground. So how the whole tree system works is the feller buncher is going to cut a trail and once the trail is cut, it is going to back out. And on its way out, it is going to sever the trees that it wants to harvest. And importantly, it'll sever them, grab them in its arms, and pick them up physically and lay them down in the trail. And it can do this with multiple trees at once if they're smaller trees, but it will cut the stem, pick it up, and lay it down. And we call this a bunch. So that is why uh, it is called a feller buncher. Next up, we have a grapple skitter that comes in and with its grapple on its back, it'll pick up the bundle and it will drag it out to the yard with the limb still on the tree. So that's why we call it the whole tree system is because the limbs are still on the tree when they're moved out to the yard. From there, we have another machine called a delimmer that will take the stems and sever the limbs. And then we are left with a tree length piece of wood. Now this is an important point. There are two terms you might hear thrown around. There's tree length and whole tree. Technically speaking, there's a difference. Whole tree refers to the trees being pulled out with their limbs on. Tree length refers to the stems being pulled out with their limbs off, as you might see in a chainsaw system. But sometimes they're kind of used interchangeably and that's because on the mill side, they're always receiving tree length wood. They're not receiving the logs with the limbs on, so they refer to it as cut to length wood and tree length wood. And so the truckers refer to it this way, the mill refers to it this way, and so it, it often just becomes interchangeable. So if you hear those two terms, uh, maybe there's a difference, maybe there's not. It kind of depends on your local vernacular. But technically, textbook wise, there is a difference. Next up, we have the cut to length system and its main harvest machine, the processor or harvester. Now, like the Feller Buncher, this comes in wheeled and tracked varieties. The tracked variety looks more like an excavator, but what makes a processor a processor is the head cutting component. So this one has two grab arms, kind of like the Feller Buncher. Let me open that up here. Uh, and this can actually grab onto a tree, and then instead of having a circular saw, it actually has a chainsaw within here that can swing out. So it grabs onto the tree, severs it from the stem, and then the tree will actually fall with the head and the rollers can move the stem back and forth. And then the saw will come out and uh, the roller wheels will measure the lengths with a computer and then cut them to specified lengths so they can be sent to the mill pre-processed. So that's why we call it 
the cut to length system. So that makes perfect sense. Let's see how this system works on the ground. So the processor will go in and to harvest trees, it will use its rollers like a grab arm to grab onto the stem. Its chainsaw will come out and importantly, whatever direction the head is facing, that's the direction the tree is going to fall. So it can't actually pick up the trees. They're just going to fall on the stem much like it would if you were to cut the tree with a chainsaw. So the tree falls down and then with the stem pointed up like that, it will pull the tree through the head and as it goes, it has knives on it which are going to de-limb the tree. So all the limbs and brush are left in the forest in front of the machine, importantly. And then as it goes, it will measure the specific lengths and cut them into logs and leave them on the side of the trail much like this. So it'll do that. It'll kind of, you know, <laughs> leave its brush on the trail for it to, to roll over. So that's an important point, like I said. The next thing that'll happen is we'll have a forwarder come in and take the logs. Now I don't have a small model of a forwarder, but I do have a big model of a forwarder. Basically what a forwarder is, it's a fusion between a tractor and a log truck. Um, so it will be able to pick up the logs and put them in a bunk and carry them out to the yard. So now let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of each system and the implications they have for the forest as a whole. And let's start with soil disturbance. So with the cut to length system, of course, the limbs are delimbed in front of the machine and it leaves a nice brush mat for the machine. So this greatly reduces the effective PSI of the machine. You have more of that weight distributed over that woody debris. And so this allows the machine to go into wetter, more sensitive, boggier sites without doing a tremendous amount of damage. And that is tremendously powerful. Now in a whole tree system, of course, the grapple skitter is bringing out the entire tree with the limb still on. And so the delimmer is going to have a pile of brush next to it. Now, in some cases that might be sold for biomass, in some cases not. But if it's not being sold, generally what will happen is the grapple skitter will have to come in and brush the trail manually. The advantage of that is that uh, if there's a, you know, a muddy spot, then this can better direct brush on that muddy spot but the vast majority of the trail is not going to have brush on it, or at least not a lot of brush. And when there is brush, it tends to be parallel with the wheels, which isn't as effective as perpendicular, which is what they tend to be on the cut to length system. So in short, the grapple skitter of the whole tree system can patch up some wet areas here and there, but it doesn't work very well if the entire site is poorly drained. With the cut to length system, it's the complete opposite. Uh, if the entire site is poorly drained, it can work quite well. But if there are some areas that are extra wet and uh, there's some extra risk of soil disturbance, then there isn't as much ability for the forwarder to pick up brush from a pile and patch up that area because the brush is distributed throughout the entire block. And to be perfectly clear, the risk of soil disturbance is present with both systems. It's just uh, there's more risk with the whole tree system and the grapple skitter. Next, let's talk about economics. So the feller buncher, because it's basically just zipping down trees and it can hold several trees in its head at once, it is a much more efficient and economic system for harvesting smaller trees. When a processor handles a tree, it does so individually and it can be fairly slow compared to the feller buncher. And so the harvesting of smaller trees tends to be a bit more expensive. And you have a similar effect with larger trees as well. When this thing picks up a tree, uh, the main engine that's actually moving the tree is the vehicle itself because it is up off the ground and so its tracks become what is actually moving the tree. With the processor when it's handling a tree, the thing moving the tree around is going to be its arm. So that comes down to uh, two, maybe three hydraulic cylinders. And so it doesn't have as much power to just deal with the tree as the feller buncher. And depending on the size of the processor, it can also have issues with some gnarly hardwoods. Uh, they can get caught up in the knives and so forth. Um, so unless it's a nice and straight hardwood stand, it isn't particularly well suited for cutting hardwoods. So in terms of economics and site suitability, the cut to length system does have more of a Goldilocks thing going on with it. But that's okay because each machine has its niche, which tends to line up with its economic and physical limitations fairly well. For example, the feller buncher, by allowing the operator to pick up trees physically and lay them down on the trail, it creates a tremendous amount of control 
over the damage to the residual stand. So it offers a high degree of protection to your growing stock, which is crucial if you're growing a species that is sold and graded on the basis of quality, which is most hardwoods. But the feller buncher suffers a problem of articulation. It can't really move its head left to right. It has to move the entire machine and it has a limited range. So oftentimes what it has to do is drive up, and this is especially true if it's a wheeled feller buncher, it has to drive up to the tree in order to cut it. Uh, so it doesn't have as much of a selection ability as the processor. Now the processor of course has this arm which has a great degree of articulation. It has a boom extension and it can spin its head 360 degrees, which really allows it to be able to reach into the forest and pick out trees individually. Once it cuts them, it doesn't have as much control over how the tree falls, and so you do tend to have more residual damage. You can have damage on uh, residual stems where the fallen trees hit up against it. You can have broken branches. So if you are cutting in a stand that is valued and graded on the basis of quality, it tends to suffer. But if you are growing softwoods for dimensional lumber, for example, that's not really a game of quality so much as it is quantity. So it's much more important to make, um, I'll call them mathematical decisions with the trees you're cutting. And this arm and rotating head really allows it to do that amazingly. And so that's why these machines, particularly the wheeled variety, um, are so commonly associated with softwood plantation, spruce plantations, um, intensive softwood management for dimensional lumber. And especially when you look at places around the world like Scandinavia, I mean, these machines are synonymous with the intensive softwood management of those Nordic countries. And so what we end up with are two incredible and capable machines and systems that still have their own niches in forest management. And that's an important point to keep in mind. In my last video and other videos I've done in the past, I've talked about trail systems and uh, the potential damage that can be done by having too much of your forest in trail systems. And while all that is true, it doesn't mean that larger machinery should be shunned. They are still incredibly important and they have their place. And that's one of the things that I wanna impart on this video is just the degree to which all the tools and systems we have are just tools for forest management, whether it's conventional versus mechanical, whole tree versus cut to length, they're all just different tools with their different niches and we have to learn how to utilize them appropriately. So with that, I'm gonna end this video, but hopefully you learned something. These are two incredibly important systems to understand. Like I said, there's a lot of different types of systems and uh, they're all mixed and matched and whatnot. But at their core, uh, I think these two systems represent the broader economy of forest machinery the best. So if you understand these systems, you're doing pretty well. And if you wanna learn more, of course, you can go grab my free ebook, How to Read Your Forest, which will be linked in the description and pinned in the comments below. So with that, I'll see you guys later.